Hello peeps and welcome back to Modded Minecraft with Night Dagger. We're on episode 19. Alright, so, off camera I did do a lot of work. However, I didn't do a whole lot of work on bees. I didn't even do a whole lot of work looking for bees, and I really didn't even do a whole lot of work hunting for resources to do bees. Because something has occurred to me. I don't really have the infrastructure right now to support a lot of bee-related stuff. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my buzzing little friends here just run on their own for a little bit. Get me some, you know, honeycomb and all that good stuff saved up. And we're going to change gears. We're going to shift into another direction for this series. Yes, again, we're going to shift directions again. But this one, I promise, we're going to stay with for at least a little bit. And... I know there's going to be at least a couple of people out there who are going to jump for joy when I show you guys what I built off camera. Because, oh man, I'm kind of impressed with this build. Notice I don't have... Uh, yeah, I don't have my uh, ladders. That's what they're called. Here anymore? I've got elevators. I did get a few more ender pearls off camera. I don't have enough ender pearls to do the elevator up there yet, so I just fly up there if I need to. But let's go downstairs and take a look. Enderman. Take a look at what I've created. You ready for this? Oh, check this out. I am so happy with this build. You guys should recognize that this is a blood magic altar setup. Doesn't this look awesome? I'm real happy with the way this build turned out. So, I have the layout here for a full tier 6 blood magic altar. The limestone with creeper panels, every place that you see a limestone with creeper panel, that is where a rune needs to go in order to upgrade the altar. But I didn't actually put the altar in yet because I wanted to do that on camera. So, let's go back up and let's craft a couple of things that we're going to need to get started with blood magic. So, the first thing we're going to need, of course, is the Blood Magic Altar, which is a furnace, some gold, diamonds, and stone. There we go. Blood Magic Altar. We're also going to need something to, something to add blood with. We're going to need the Sacrificial Knife. Your first prick. Not that kind, get your mind out of the gutter. Alright, we're going to break that out. And if you take a look under here, I actually did leave the underneath here. Oh, I had a spacer stone there. I actually did leave the underneath of it hollow. I didn't bother, you know, prettying up the underneath of it, because how often are we going to look at that? But we need to put down our blood magic altar. There we go. And we now have a Tier 1 Blood Magic Altar. In order to make this work, all it takes, just like the thing said, is a little prick of the finger. Hold the Sacrificial Knife and right-click. And you bleed off one heart. Oh, that starts to sting. Now, I have to be a little bit careful with how I do this, because remember, we're using Hunger Overhaul. We don't regenerate naturally, do we? No, we don't. So, that's going to be a pain. We're going to have to see if we can do something to fix that, right? Because we can bleed ourselves down, and it's going to take us a while to heal. Well, there is something we can do about that. We're going to mesh mods. In RF tools, there's a device called, where is it? It's around here somewhere. It's not a space projector. It's not the shield projector, the matter booster, the androgenic, or any of that crap. Where is it? The environment controller. Block of diamond. Block of emerald, machine frame, block of iron, block of gold, and four ender pearls. Well, that means we need ender pearls. Son of a bitch. 
And I only have one. So we're definitely going to have to wait and see if we can get some ender pearls at night. Damn it, I knew I should have farmed some ender pearls off camera. Oh well. Um, let's see what else we're going to need. If we take a look here. In here, there are different modules. This module gives regeneration when used in the environment controller. This one gives regeneration 3 when used in the environment controller. Well, you can see here, this takes a regeneration module, so we'll need to create the regeneration module first. This takes the essence of an iron golem. So, we need to get a syringe and an iron golem. Do I have any pumpkins? Yeah, I have some pumpkins. There we go. And we're going to need some iron blocks. Well, of course we're not going to be able to just pull iron blocks out. We'll just have to do iron. There we go. We've got four iron blocks and we need a syringe. Now we're obviously not going to want to do this right in the middle of my base. So we're going to kind of take a little bit of a hop out here. I think we're just going to put him right over here. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put him right in here. And Iron Golem, get. Right? Right. Let's poke him. He's not fighting back. By the way, off-camera, I did go ahead and replace my my Hammer. It's silky and massively hasted. And I replaced my sword. It is made with a shiny blade, because it has the highest damage. Um, a paper guard and a manulian handle. I think it's a manulian handle. But then I applied a bunch of lapis and a bunch of quartz to it, so this thing hurts. I had to have my looting three sword back. I really wish there was an easy way for me to get uh, Ender Pearls. And my headset is clicking really bad. I'm not sure why. Oh, and I got a rose from him. Alright, so. We need the regeneration module. There we go. We have a regeneration module. If we wanted to make this into a regeneration plus module, well, all we need is two more syringes. It pretty much triples the RF cost. You know what? Let's just do that. I really should have left the golem alive, but... But that's the price you pay when you're not paying attention. Okay, I need another syringe. Let's make one more. We'll get this other empty syringe out. And let's go ahead and... You know what? Since he wasn't fighting back, we'll just do it right here. There we go. Iron Golem. I promise this won't hurt too much. This will. Okay, regeneration module, two syringes, regeneration plus module. Alright, now we just need... We need it to be nighttime. I'm not really sure I want to wait for nighttime. Well, we might not have to. Let's go ahead and make our first orb. I think I can summon up the life to do that. Weak Blood Orb takes 2,000 LP and a diamond in a Tier 1 altar. So, we need a diamond. Turns out I have one left that I haven't broken down yet. Let's head down here and just to make sure we have enough life in this thing. 
gonna bleed off seven more hit or seven more health points. We stick our diamond in there. And we wait. It'll absorb two thousand life points. And any second now. Come on. Give me what I need. Come on. You know you want to. Give me my orb. Bleed a few more hit points into it. Just in case I didn't have enough in there. Oh, yep, there we go. Weak blood orb. Alright. First thing you need to do is you need to bind this to you. By right-clicking. Burns off one heart. Puts a little bit of life on it. And now we're going to stick that in there. Actually, no, we're not. We're not going to stick that in there yet. Because we need a way to tell how much life is in our life point network. Which means we need a divination sigil. Divination sigil is any blood orb, a blank slate, and some glass. The blank slate is a piece of stone infused with 1,000 life points. Well, easy enough. One piece of stone. Down we go. Pop you in. Bleed off five more hearts. One heart is the equivalent of 2,000 LP. So by bleeding off five hearts, I know I have enough life in there. We're going to throw our blood orb in there and let it start absorbing. You know what? I just realized I need that. Give me that. All right. Glass. Blank slate in the middle. And any blood orb at the bottom gives you the divination sigil. The divination sigil has basically two functions. If you use it when you're not pointing at an altar, it'll tell you how much LP is in your network. And also, if you take a look, there's a nifty little bar up there. I haven't seen that before. That's awesome. I wonder if that goes up as my LP does. Oh yeah, look at that. Check that out. That's awesome. If you use it pointing at an altar, it'll tell you how much LP is in the altar. It'll also tell you the altar's current tier. So, if we take a look at that, we have 2,200 LP in our altar. Hmm. Not a whole lot or in our life network. It's night. Let's head out and hunt for Enderman. This is made substantially easier because I have hover mode. The problem is actually finding the bastards. Because Endermen are still kind of a rare spawn. And I haven't found one of those biomes that likes to spawn them yet. I basically need to find two Endermen, one if I'm really lucky, more if I'm not. What time is it? Oh man, I missed quite a bit of the night, didn't I? And while we're flying around, I'm also going to burn off life points. As long as I stay at or above three hearts, I should be okay. Oh, we have Endermen. We have two Endermen. Let's come down here. 
Oh, did you seriously just get hurt by something and run off? Hey, you, come here. Oh, that's not good. Down here. Hey, I got my three ender pearls. That was exactly what I needed. But you know what? We can do better. Hey, you, get over here. Come here. Come here. Where'd you go? Where did you go? Don't get anywhere near that water. There we go. Alright. That was everything we needed. And we have a world hole. I'm not going to let that concern me too much right now. I'm just going to fly over it and head back to my base. Alright, going down. And going down. Okay, let's put our ender pearls in here. And Becca just sent me a poke on TeamSpeak. There we go. I love having my second monitor back. Thank you so much, Dragon, for the extra monitor. Uh, how long have I been recording? All right, let's go ahead and get that charging. And we're going to make ourselves our environment controller. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need a block of emerald. We're going to need a block of diamond, which means we're going to have to break down some of our diamonds. I haven't made a fortune pick yet, so we're going to have to... You know what? Let's grind it. Still got some power on our gas engine. So we'll toss our diamond ore in there and we'll grind it down. Come on. Up. Up. Oh, derp. There is no up. Alright. <laughs> um, we need a block of iron. We need a block of gold. And we need one of its machine blocks. Um, environment controller, machine frame. Need a few bits of gold. All right, uh, machine frame, get. By now, we should have at least a few diamond shards in here. Diamond ore flakes, nine of them. Very nice. Toss these in here. Basically, this is a way to get three diamonds out of every one. All of the abyssal block that I was smelting up for my blood magic room down there. There we go. Nine diamonds. Block diamond. Gets us our environment controller. Now what? Got a block of diamond. I just put it in there. I didn't actually craft it. Derp. All right, environment controller, get. We'll take our regeneration plus module, and we're going to come up here. Actually, let me get my crescent hammer. Okay. 
And let me get my backpack so I can actually fly up there. And we're just going to steal the hardened energy cell from here. Now, when I watched the mod spotlight that Direwolf did on RF Tools, and yes, I watched his mod spotlight, he is still really good at you know, covering mods and stuff like that. I do still occasionally watch his stuff, don't hate. Um, when I watched his mod spotlight, when he was when he mentioned the environment controller, he said, oh, Way of Time is going to hate this block. Well, he is. Here's why. We're going to set this thing to a radius of 1. Or, we're going to set it to a radius of 5. Right? Minimum height, 30. Maximum height 70. No, we don't need that. We're going to be on height 49 pretty much constantly while we're doing this thing. So we're going to set this to a minimum height of 48 and a maximum height of 50. We're going to put our, our Regeneration Plus module in there. And we're going to see it's consuming 5 RF a tick. We put this hardened energy cell behind it, tell it it can output to this side, and oh hey, check that out. We're getting a regeneration 3 effect. Oh man. <laughs> this thing. Combined with blood magic, it, it, it's too fucking strong. I mean, look how fast I'm regenerating. Look how much LP is in the altar. It's just, it's crazy. I've got 3,600 in my own personal feed, and this uh, this thing has 7,800 LP in it already. Well, we need 8,000. There's 8,000. Let's go ahead and bleed off a little more, just because we can. We're not going to be down here at the moment, so let's take the Regeneration Plus module out. And we're going to come up here. And we're going to get some stone. We just need regular old stone. We need to make some runes in order to upgrade our altar to tier 2. Uh, blood rune. Ah! Game freeze. Blood runes are made from blank slates, regular stone, and any orb, which means we actually need 16 of these slates. Well, we could just, you know, toss the slates in the altar. Or we could just toss the stone in the altar one at a time. I don't like that. That's boring. Hey! What's your issue? Prick? Don't mess up my blood magic room. Now, I want to feed in multiple things at once. You can do that. Using a hopper. If you attach a hopper to the side of the blood magic altar and toss something in there, it's going to put multiple things in at once. We're going to start draining out our LP at a fairly constant rate. And instead of converting these things one at a time, it's going to wait until it's absorbed enough LP to convert the entire stack. I put 8 in, which means it takes 8,000 LP in order to do this. 
put our regeneration plus module back in here, get that running again, <clears throat> so that we can start bleeding off some more LP. I think I'm actually going to siphon it off into my own personal network, though. Check this, we're down to about 3,000. We should be done fairly soon. <clears throat> and if you take a look at my own personal blood gauge up there in the corner, it's full. I can't absorb any more into my own network. My network is full at 5,000. 2,000, once up, there we go. We've got our eight blank slates. Let's do it again. We are regenerating faster than this thing can drain us. This is just, I mean, it, it's crazy when you combine these two mods just how OP it is. How much LP is in here? 5,000. Seven thousand? How crazy is that, guys? I mean, seriously. And this thing's only using five RF a tick to provide this effect because I'm hitting such a small area of effect. That's nuts. There we go, more blank slates. We're gonna sit, we're gonna change that to on to activate. Let's just grab us a lever. We'll take the lever down with us next time we go down. Uh, by now, I probably have ground up most, if not all, of my diamond. I have, so basically I'm just wasting fuel. That's a lot of diamond. We'll deal with that off camera. Alright, blood runes. Blood runes are stone, blank slates, blood orb. There's eight. We're going to want that blood orb back. We're also going to need to get an emerald. Because we're going to want to make our second tier blood orb. The apprentice blood orb is 5,000 LP and an emerald in a tier 2 altar. Well, how do you make an altar tier 2? By filling in blood runes around the first tier here. Now, I went ahead and just completely built my blood altar up as if I was going straight for a tier 6. I didn't include some of the stuff that you need, but I put the basic layout in, I put in where you're going to need all of the runes, the limestone with creeper panel. These are all where runes have to go. So the first tier is just eight in a circle. No. That's the downside to... There we go. We'll have to do that for now. That's the downside to using the carpenter's, build, uh, carpenter's wedges. Oh. On that subject, I have updated the pack as of a few minutes before I started this recording. The pack is now in version 1.0.2. The only change is that the build of Carpenter's Blocks that we're using has been downgraded to a non-dev version, which will allow it to actually, you know, take block painting again. So, block painting works again. 
go ahead, update your pack, and make all the pretty stuff you want. Alright, we've got eight blood runes in a circle underneath the blood altar. That makes our blood altar now tier two. Let's drop our emerald in. Let's put our lever on the side of that so we can turn that on. And let's go ahead and bleed a little more. We've got plenty in there for this transformation. But you can never have too much blood in a blood altar. There we go. We have our tier two orb. Again, we're going to right click it to bind it to our own personal network. Our network can now hold a lot more. Notice that the bar before that was full is now less than a quarter full. Can't remember the exact amount that these things can hold, but it's a lot. We still have 8,000 LP in our altar. Well, what can we do with 8,000 LP? we can make some more of these. Eight thousand eight hundred. There we go. Conversion has started. The tier three altar is going to require twenty of those blood runes, which means we're going to need forty slates. It's also going to require a capstone for those pillars that I put up. The capstone for this tier is just glowstone blocks. We're going to need a bunch more stone. And then we're just going to come up here, we're going to take the torches, which we're a placeholder off, and we're going to put the glowstone on top as our capstones. Alright, we now have the form for the tier 3, except for the runes. In order to get the runes, we got to wait for these things to finish infusing. Let's go ahead and bleed into this thing. And we've got eight of the, let's see, ten, we need forty, right? Means we need thirty-two more of these things. That's, that's, yeah, that's a hefty amount of LP. That's thirty-two thousand LP. Our altar can only hold ten thousand, right? Well, let's not go let's not go completely overboard. Let's just toss a stack of 16 of them in there. We can keep up with the LP demand that this altar is going to have. You can see it's bleeding it down real fast. But we ended at 5,800. We take a look now, we're up to 7,500. Take a look now. We're at 7,700. So we are able to keep up with as fast as this thing can infuse. At least working on slates. Take a look at it now. <laughs> we actually need to let this thing drain a little bit because we're pushing close to its capacity. So in the meantime, let's bleed some into our own personal network. And you can use the blood orbs as a 
replacements for the sacrificial knife if you're bleeding into your own personal network. It does not work for bleeding into the altar. You have to use the knife to bleed into the altar. 6400 Go ahead and bleed into the altar some more. This should be done transmuting fairly soon. Click, 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 click. Stupid frickin' headset. We're just waiting on the pop here. Now something that I thought was supposed to be a thing, that I've not noticed. If you're under a Regeneration 2 or higher effect, you're supposed to suffer from massive amounts of hunger while you're near the altar in order to offset doing stuff like what I'm doing right now. I haven't noticed it, so I don't know if there's a config option to make that happen, or what, but it doesn't appear to be working. Okay. We have 6,225 in there. We can take a full bleed with no problem. And we'll just sit here and... Uh, actually, let's just burn off a whole bunch. 8,700. Nine thousand. It's over... No, I'm not going to go there. 9800, okay. Let's bleed off into our own network. This Regeneration 3 effect is working so much better than I thought it would. I had this idea for doing this, but I hadn't actually tested it in advance. I really was expecting to get the Hunger effect. So, not having the hunger effect, this is, this is OP as shit. This is crazy. Like, almost broken levels of OP. No, actually I'd say it is broken, because basically it gives me a source of infinite LP. Why would I bother setting up a Well of Suffering when I can just sit here under a Ritual of the Feathered Knife for a couple of hours and have as much LP as I want, you know? If nothing else, this thing should be using more power than 5 RF a tick. For a Regeneration 3 effect? Ah, it's just ridiculously powerful. Alright, I have more than half filled my own personal LP network. I'm sitting on 1,700 LP. Or 17,000 LP. I'm kind of hoping to be able to complete the next tier of Altar because there's something that I want to try to do this episode that I've always had a hard time doing in the past, and I really want to see how easy it is with this Regeneration 3 effect. Tick, tick, tick. Click. There we go. We've got our 40 slates. Stone. More stone. Blank slates. And any orb gets you blood runes. Blood runes, when applied to this altar, on this tier, I'm just going to drop down under here, make it a little easier on me. The blood runes, when you apply them to this tier, And you have the layout exactly as I have it up there. 
with the glowstone as the capstones, we'll create this, we'll turn this into a tier 3 altar. What can you do with a tier 3 altar? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is make your tier 3 orb, right? <clears throat> the Magician's Blood Orb takes 25,000 LP plus a block of gold. Now, the altar can only hold 10,000 without upgrades. And any substantial upgrade is going to require you to... Let's smelt our block of gold while I'm talking. Um, in order to upgrade it, you're going to need runes of augmented capacity, which takes at least the tier 2 blood orb, or the tier 3 blood orb. So you can't even make these runes until you have <coughs> this orb. Now, in the past, in order to be able to successfully create this orb, I've had to put tons and tons and tons of mobs on there, or have multiple players all bleeding themselves at the same time, or use massive amounts of potions keeping up a regeneration 2 effect plus fast healing. Well, we're about to see if I can do this just under a regeneration 3 effect. We're at 9500 LP. Let's put that in there. And uh, we're draining real fast, aren't we? Ooh, I think it might actually be draining faster than I can replace it. I think I might be losing progress here. I might have to rely on something else. Oh. Nope. We're fighting it. We're going to start losing progress real fast here. Okay, yeah, I can't do this straight up. So, we're going to have to rely on another toy that this mod gives us. There's a new item called a Blood Letters Pack that takes a blank slate, a leather tunic, a bucket, some flint, and some glass. Well, of course I don't have a piece of stone down here to make a blank slate. We need to make one blank slate. Man, I almost had that too. I'm pretty sure I was very close to having that all on one shot. Let's pop that in there. Make our blank slate. There we go. Amazing how much faster that is. Okay, let's go ahead and come up here and make our Blood Letters pack. We're going to need a leather tunic. There we go. Blood Letters pack. This pack really chafes. What that means is when you put this thing on, it is going to start hurting you. The life it takes... Oh, hello. There we go. Now I'm under the regen effect. The life it takes gets stored in the pack. You can take the pack off and right-click the altar to instantly dump LP into the altar. So, let's start this over. We're going to bleed ourselves down until we get this altar back up to about 10,000. And I'm going to let this episode run just a little bit long, because I want to do this on camera, and it's not going to take me much more than five minutes, I don't think. I didn't record anything yesterday, so you guys can have a 50-minute episode today.
9 to 200, 4, 6, 8. 98, 65. Now we're going to put the blood splitters pack on. We're going to let this burn the hell out of us. And we're going to see that every time it ticks, it's going to add it's going to add 100 LP into the blood letters pack. This thing can soar up to a thousand or up to 10,000. So, if you guys were wondering how it's possible to make this thing on your own, this is how. Now, the blood letters pack by default will only take you down to half a heart. It has kind of the same effect as the Ritual of the Feathered Knife, if you guys are familiar with that. It will not kill you. It will keep you on the very edge of death, though, which means on this pack, definitely combine it with a regen effect. Otherwise, you're going to be crawling around slow as hell because you're going to be constantly in the dying state. That's no fun for anyone. All right. We're almost there. I think we can actually just get the process started. And I am bleeding myself so fast now. Combining that pack. Okay, the pack is now at 9700, 98, 99. Pack has now stored 10,000. That's all the pack can store. So it can't store any more. Alters down to 2,000, 1,900, 1,400. Oh, come on. I can't dump the pack in while there's an infusion in progress? What the hell uses that then? See, I, I don't know if I'm actually making any progress here or if I'm just losing progress now. I'm curious, though. I'm curious if I create a second blood altar and attach the second blood altar to this thing using a, t using a pipe of some sort, if I could dump the blood letters pack into the second altar and have it pump LP into the first one. Yeah, I'm pushing the very edge of death here. And it's just not going to work. I'm losing too much progress on this infusion as I go. So we're going to need a way to get a boost of LP in order to keep this infusion going just a little bit longer, even with the regeneration effect. Yeah, this isn't going to work. All right, let's go ahead and pull the block out. We're going to dump the blood letters pack into the altar. And no, I don't want it to siphon any more off of me because there's no point in it right now. Let's turn this off. And I'm going to end this episode here. Um, there's really not a whole lot of point to me continuing this at the moment because I'm not going to be able to get enough power put into this block of gold without a little bit more thought and a little bit more research. So, off camera, I'm going to figure out exactly how I'm going to approach this. I'm going to figure out what I want to do in order to get my block of gold infused to my next tier orb. And we're going to come back in next episode for episode 20. We're going to increase this thing a little bit further, and we're going to probably start delving into some rituals just before I do a world upload, which ought to be a lot of fun for you guys. 
So, thank you for watching. This has been Night Dagger with episode 19 of season 5, Mod of Minecraft with Night Dagger. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. I'll catch you later, peeps.